everyone, today I will introduce to you some basic functions of LiDAR360 MLS, including point cloud measurement tools, selection and cutting tools, section tools, as well as some operations related to section measurement and classification editing. First is the measurement tool. Single point selection allows you to click on a single point in the point cloud and the corresponding point cloud coordinate information will be displayed. Multi-point selection functions in the same way, except that multiple points can be selected at one time. For example, after selecting multiple points in the multi-point window list, we can see the ID of this point, the XYZ information, as well as other attribute information corresponding to the ID. This information can be recorded by selecting multiple objects at one time and we can save this information in the table. Click Save 3D Points. Check the attribute information that needs to be saved and save the file in TXT format. We can also add a new field to this form in which you can mark the content you want and carry out further operations. When saving this table, it can also be saved together with existing data. Point density measurement performs density statistics on a point cloud within a set rectangular range. For example, set a rectangle frame with a width of 10 meters. Then, select an approximate center point of the point cloud density range to be measured. The software will display a 10 by 10 red rectangular box and will also mark the average point density value. In this range, it is about 4,682 points, and the following line indicates the number of all points in the current range. Here are some measurement tools, including length measurement, area measurement, angle measurement, height measurement, and volume measurement. This is an example of length measurement. Double-click to choose the endpoint. The measured length refers to the length of the zebra crossing connected by these three points which is 16 meters. Click this button again to turn off this function. Now, an example of area measurement. Draw a polygon, and the measurement results will be updated in real time in the form of labels. Volume measurement includes two measurement methods. One is to customize the selection of a surface, and the other is to read the reference point from a file. First, let's talk about the custom selection reference surface. If I want to measure the volume of this battlefield, I will select a few points on the edge of the ship. Usually, four points should cover it. There are several ways, such as minimum value, fitting plane, and random. Here, we can choose the default. If you do not select tin, the default is the grid method. And if you do select tin, it will be a triangular network method. In this way, the calculation may be more accurate but the efficiency may be lower and will take up more memory in your computer. However, if the computer performance is high enough, you can directly perform the calculation. This is the measured volume and it will be displayed on the point cloud. Here, it's projected area, surface area, cut, fill, and total amount are calculated. Another way is to read a point from a file and then calculate. This method only supports handheld data after calculation. This txt file is the real point on this object, and so will be more accurate. When using Green Valley International's handheld devices for volume measurement, it is recommended to apply this method. If you are using other handheld devices, it is recommended to apply the custom method. This is the selection tool and cutting tool in MLS. These two functions should be used together. Selection tools include polygonal, rectangular, spherical, circular, online, offline, plane, and subtractive selection. The reduction selection cannot be used alone and must be used in conjunction with other selection functions. Then, the surface up and down functions are related to the set plane. After selecting a point cloud area, we can save it separately or remove it. Inner cropping means that the red area is reserved and the outer area is removed. Outer cropping means that the red area is removed and the outer area is reserved. Based on the saved data, 
it will prompt whether or not to reload the current data. After loading, the project can perform subsequent data processing. The Section tool can be used to select data based on a bounded box. After the selection is complete, a section window will be added to the left menu bar. These three buttons are to control the bounded box for translation, rotation, and scaling. Translation, rotation, and scaling. Adjustment errors can also be reset to return. You can customize the size of the bounded box and the value of the rotation angle X, Y, and Z to adjust and crop the point cloud. The most important thing is that we also provide vertical section and horizontal section tools. Point cloud display as elevation in EDL and vertical mode. In this situation, if we want to view this row of trees, the first two points determine the axis, and the third point determines the size being viewed. Double-click to end, forming a section slice. The 3D window defaults to the front view horizontal section. Draw a rectangular frame and double-click to end selection. The 3D window is displayed in the top view mode, and the cropping effect can be viewed from different perspectives. Save it after cropping. Let's move on to the section function, which includes measurement, classification, and editing tools. First, we must click on the section button to activate this feature. Here, we can select an area in the point cloud or select a custom range of the buffer zone for box selection. The rotation tool can rotate the point cloud in the section window. The measurement tool is different from the general measurement and the default is the orthographic projection shown in the section window. After selecting two points, we can easily calculate the horizontal distance and vertical distance under the current view. In the case that the section scene rotation is not turned on, the frustum axis is always the vertical Z axis parallel to the horizontal plane. The vertical distance and horizontal distance in this case are useful in some scenarios. For example, we can check the accuracy of point cloud data in this information. The section window provides tools for manual classification. Select a piece of point cloud data that needs to be modified. Then set the category and target category that needs to be modified. And select the appropriate selection tool based on your needs. The selection tools include polygonal selection, frame selection, circle selection, online selection, and offline selection. Use the polygon to select the point cloud data to be modified. Adjust the display mode to display by category, and we can clearly see the modified point cloud information. To correct errors, we can press Ctrl-Z to return to the previous step, or click the tool to cancel all temporary operations. After confirming the modified point cloud, click Save. If the display mode is adjusted to display by category, it will be saved to the current modification result of the point cloud. This has been an introduction to the basic point cloud tools of measurement, selection, and some measurement and classification editing related to the cutting and section tools in LiDAR 360 MLS. Thank you for watching.